Would you believe it? Euphrates River. No one could have imagined that a river in Western Asia could be the epitome of answers to all of our questions. Why is this river so important? How does it play a role in the rapture and the second coming of Christ? Let's take a look. The Euphrates River is the largest river found in Western Asia. The vast river begins at Turkey and makes its way to the Persian Gulf, going through southeast Syria and then through Iraq. The river unites with the Tigris River at the Shat al Arab through Leyte, which is emptied into the Persian Gulf. The majority of the volume of the water in the river comes from both rainfall and melting ice and snow. We know the importance of the river for mankind, but what about the Bible? Well, this river is mentioned multiple times all throughout the Bible and has great significance. Let me elaborate. In the book of Genesis, the origin of the great river is told. Genesis chapter 2 verses 10 to 14 says, A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing into four branches. The first branch, called the Pishon, flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Asher. The fourth branch is called the Euphrates. It is said that a river flows out of the land of Eden, after which it then branches into four sister rivers. Next, Genesis chapter 15 verse 8 says, So the Lord made a covenant with Abraham that day and said, I have given this land to your descendants, all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. Tells us about when God talked to Abraham, making a covenant with him. God makes a promise to Abraham, showing him the promised land for his descendants. The Euphrates River is the boundary to the land given to Abraham's descendants. This is all but just a few references from the Old Testament stating the existence of such rivers. The true significance is revealed in later verses. Before I can reveal that what we most anticipated, I need to tell you the story of the Second Coming. Everything said and done in the Bible has led us to this point in time, the time of preparation. We all are patiently waiting and preparing for the Second Coming of Christ. All of us believers wait the rapture. But wait, when is the Second Coming of Christ? The answer is that nobody knows. No angel in heaven nor human on earth knows the true date, time and year in which the judgment begins. Matthew chapter 24 verse 36 says, However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. The knowledge of this has sparked a lot of speculation amongst preachers and believers. There have been many public predictions that have been made over the years, but here is the fact. All we know is that when it does inevitably happen, it will be like the days of Noah before the flood. Everyone would be enjoying themselves, consumed in banquets and weddings. This speaks to the fact that although we're all equally aware of the Day of Judgment, it can happen at any time even if it may seem to many that it was at an unexpected moment. The first thing that will happen would be the Rapture. What is the Rapture and why is it crucial in the Second Coming of Christ? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 14 through 15 says, For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. Those who truly believe in their hearts that our Lord Jesus Christ died, but then was resurrected, will be the ones taken in the rapture. Those who have already passed have not yet met the Lord. Both of those who passed before and those who are alive during the rapture are taken together. After the rapture, an angel comes forth from the east, carrying the seal of the living God. This angel comes with the order to the four angels of destruction to not harm the earth, neither oceans nor land, until every last one of the chosen 144,000 of God's servants have been sealed with the seal of the living God. The 144,000 people are from the 12 tribes of Israel, amounting to 12,000 from each tribe. After the angel completes sealing the chosen 144,000 people, that is when angels blow the seven trumpets. The first four trumpets are known as the trumpets of devastation. Fire with blood is what ensues at the sound of the first trumpet. When this is unleashed upon the earth, all green grass and a third of the trees will all burn. A large burning rock plunging into the depths of the oceans is what happens at the sound of the second trumpet. This causes all ships and aquatic life to be destroyed and a third of the oceans will be turned into blood. 
At the sound of the third trumpet, a third of all freshwater sources are poisoned as a result of the great star woodworm falling on the earth. Mankind will be terribly affected, as many will not survive the effects of the poison. Our celestial bodies, the sun, stars, and moon, are struck after the sounding of the fourth trumpet. This will cause a large darkness over the earth for a third of the hours of day and night. The remaining three trumpets are called the three woes. An angel will appear before the fifth trumpet sounds. The angel bears a warning to those who are left on earth, woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then at the sound of the fifth trumpet, the bottomless pit is opened by a personified star, causing the atmosphere to darken as smoke is being released from within the pit. Through the smoke, commanded by the king, Abaddon, locusts described to be scorpion-tailed war horses that have lion's teeth and a man-like face, are released to torment but not kill those who do not have the seal of God. As the sixth trumpet sounds, the four angels that had been bound to the Euphrates River are released, each of whom has an army of 200 and million mounted troops. These mounts can bring forth fire, brimstone and smoke. These warriors are the cause for the annihilation of a third of mankind. At the sound of the seventh and the last trumpet, loud voices from heaven will chant together, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Any survivors deemed worthy are also taken by God to join with the others. Now the question still remains, what does the Euphrates River have anything to do with this? Firstly, during the Great Tribulation period, when the sixth angel has blown their trumpet, the Holy Scriptures have revealed that four angels who have been bound to the Euphrates have been released to kill a third of mankind. This is written in Revelation chapter 9 verses 13-16. through 16. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Secondly, in the book of Revelation, there had been prophecies that have been revealed. In Revelation chapter 16 verse 12, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This is one part of the seven bowls of God wrath, each consisting of judgments full of wrath of God, which is being unleashed into the followers of the Antichrist. Following this, verses 13 to 15 of Revelation chapter 16 say, Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as to not go naked and be shamefully exposed. The judgment waiting for those who follow the Antichrist is excruciating. An example of this is seen later on in the chapter. In Revelation chapter 16 verses 20 to 21, Every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people. And they cursed God on account of the plague of hail, because the plagues were so terrible. This is what awaits the ones who follow the Antichrist. Those wicked people are to face the harsh judgment God has imposed, as these people are all given mercy through Christ, but they chose to not repent, but instead chose to continue living in their cruel ways. As the scriptures have told us time and time again, one's repentance and then asking God for forgiveness is the only way to salvation. In Revelation chapter 7 verse 13 it says, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This verse shows those of us who believe a small glimpse of the eternity promised by God. The Euphrates River is a crucial part of the ecosystem and economy of the vast majority of inhabitants in the countries through which it passes. Recent research conducted by the Ministry of Water Resources says that there will be about a 30% decrease in the volume of water by 2035. There has been a severe drought in these regions due to the poor conservation of the river's supply. This decrease in water is going to be devastating for the economy of this region. Take this as a sign. The end times are nearing, and when the time does come, the Euphrates will dry up fully. In the end, we must all ask ourselves this one question. Are we ready for God when the time comes?